Well, hello, good people. Today, we're going to take a look at FluxDev Turbo Alpha, and we're going to compare it to the Hyperlora and the Q8 Guff model. Now, as always, check the description for the link on where to get this Lora. And you'll see here it was done by Ali Mama Creative. And make note, it does fall under the dev non-commercial license. Once you get on the page, just scroll down to the bottom here. We want to click on the arrow and download it. You see it's only 694 megabytes. Typically what I like to do is just highlight the name of it, copy, and then when I download it, I'll rename it based on what the developers called it. And in case it's not obvious, make sure to download it into your LoRa folder. Now there's no mention on the weight, so I just left it at one and it seemed to do pretty well. And the setup I have for the comparisons is using the dev Q8. I've got the Q8 text encoder and the improved VitL14 text encoder. And all the images were done with Euler beta. And this LoRa is an eight step LoRa. So we put in eight steps, 832 by 1152 and distilled CFG at 3.5. Now, what I would say in terms of quality, it's uh, very close to the Q8 model. Now, if we look at the comparisons here, I have the Q8 dev model here, the Hyper 8 model, and here's the Turbo. Now, you can see that the Turbo and Q8 model looks very similar. Slight differences, there's a bit more freckles on her face here. Whereas the Hyper 8 Laura in my prompt, I have Spanish Filipino for the nationality. And for this particular prompt, it tends to lean towards more the A. Asian look. And you're going to see a running theme throughout these comparisons where the Turbo looks closer to the Q8 and the Hyper 8 tends to drift a little bit farther than the Q8. You see the hair is a bit longer on the Hyper 8 compared to the Turbo and the Q8. And the outfits on all of them are slightly different. I do notice with close-up portraits we get a lot of this highlight shine in the face. Almost looks like she's sweaty. <laughs> but in terms of the look, very comparable to Q8. Now this one was interesting. The prompt was just art by Ermin Monzon and I used the same seed and for whatever reason the Hyper 8 just translated it into a woman. So in this case you see Turbo 8 and Q8 very similar compositions and characters whereas the Hyper 8 strayed drastically away from the Q8. And that's going to happen from time to time, especially with such a simple prompt. Now, one thing that I've noticed with the Turbo model, it tends to have this very creative flair to it. I'd say the prompt coherency is still good. Now, when it comes to simple text, it does a pretty decent job. The Hyperlora here, in all fairness, this particular seed, it didn't pick up. But once I changed the seed, it did a much better job. But generally speaking, what I would say about the text is that it lacks a little bit compared to the Hyperlora. These ones turned out okay, but I had to generate, I'd say, about 20 to get three decent ones. Some of them were missing the dev, so it should say Flux Dev Turbo Alpha. But the text it did write, at least it was spelled properly. That being said, you get a lot of nonsense as well. So if I had any nitpick, it would be the text coherency with this Turbo model. Now in terms of inference speed, there's a slight advantage to the Hyper Laura, but a two second difference isn't really going to be a major factor. So far from my own testing, I find the image looks closer to the Dev Q8 model, and it tends to have a certain creative flair to it. But because it's so similar to the Q8 model, I like the Hyper Laura because it has a different look to it. It's almost like a fine-tuned model. Now, if you happen to be new to my channel and you want to see a breakdown between the various Flux Dev models, Q8, FP8, NF4, I go through it in this video right here. And as always, my friends, until the next video, I'll see you when I see you.